in a classroom, the power dynamic is us and them. We're the ones seen with all the power. They're the ones underneath us. So their natural inclination is simply to imitate, to act like us. So this leads to very important questions of how do we shift this dynamic so kids feel as though they're a little more agentic, have a little more power so they don't have to imitate us. They're allowed to have their own goals, pursuits, dreams, and passions. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is Socioeconomic Status and Self-Other Processing by Farwa and Ovi. Now to understand this paper, we have to recognize that human beings are always imitating one another. We're mirroring one another. So for instance, right now when I'm moving my hand like this, if I could take a picture of your brain, a lot of you are covertly imitating this movement. In your brain, you're imagining yourself moving your hand. Now this ability to mirror, that's where we think things like empathy and sympathy come from. We can read each other's thoughts and actions and intentions because we're imitating them all the time. Now interestingly, in nature, we see an asymmetry in the way different animals imitate one another. And what I mean is this, it all boils down to power dynamics. Animals with a high status, like the leaders of the pack, tend to imitate less. They kind of just do their thing. Whereas animals beneath them, those in a lower power status in this dynamic, they imitate more. They tend to focus more on that leader and try and do more of what that leader does. Now in human beings, interestingly, this all kind of comes back on the idea of goal pursuit. So individuals who have a lot of power, who are in a high status position, tend to be highly goal active. They kind of set goals and they go for them. And these people are rarely distracted by anything. They're so focused on their goal that nothing really throws them off the track. Whereas individuals in a lower status tend to be highly distractible. They're so focused on imitating and mirroring other things that their own personal goals kind of take a back seat. So the way we always say it is people in a high status act, whereas people in a lower status act like people in a higher status. Their own personal goals go by the wayside and they just start imitating those other people. So enter this paper. Okay, what this paper says is, will we find this same kind of asymmetry, this power dynamic, when we use SES, social economic status, as kind of our measure. Do students from a high SES, are they more goal focused, while students coming in from a low SES, are they more distractible and, and susceptible to irrelevant distractions? So what they did is this, they had a bunch of kids perform a finger tapping task. So the way this, this task is incredibly simple. So you just stand there with your hand on the table and on a screen in front of you, every once in a while, the number one or the number two will appear. Anytime the number one appears, you're supposed to raise and lower your index finger. Anytime the number two appears, you're supposed to raise and lower your middle finger. Pretty simple. Now here's the twist. On that screen with the numbers, they were also showing another person's hand. And every once in a while, that hand would move incongruent with the numbers. So if the number one came up, the hand on the screen would move the wrong finger, would move its middle finger up and down. And what they were taking a look at is this idea of an interference effect. So if you're highly goal focused, when the number and the hand on the screen don't match, it really shouldn't matter. Why? Because you've got your goal, move my index finger, nothing should get in the way. Whereas if you're distractible, susceptible to people around you, then you should see high interference. Even though that one comes up, if the hand on the screen moves the middle finger, you're more likely to imitate, to mirror that, and do the wrong movement and have to recorrect that later. So this kind of interference effect, the impact of the incongruence between the number and the hand on the screen and your own actions becomes a measure of your own self-other processing. Are you more focused on yourself and your own goals or others and trying to imitate what's going on out there? So a bunch of kids do this task and here's what they find. Kids from a high SES background have almost no interference effect. When there's a difference between the number and the hand on the screen, these students only lose about nine milliseconds in their reaction time, which means they're highly internally focused. They're goal oriented. It doesn't matter if the world's doing something else. I got my goal, I'm doing it. Whereas kids from a low SES background, that interference effect jumped up to 42 milliseconds, almost five times longer. That means they were largely externally focused, simply trying to imitate the world around them. Also, when you look at just pure errors, how many times people screwed up, again, high SES people screwed up about 8% of the times, which means they were just highly focused on the task, whereas low SES screwed up about 26% of the time. They were more taken in by, more imitative of the hand on the screen than they were their own goal while looking at that number. So what does this mean for us as teachers? Well, I can kind of think of three things where this kind of resonates back with us. The first has to do with assignments. Now, a lot of the times as teachers, we kind of give kids freedom. We say, look, I've taught you all this stuff. Now I want you to go do a project on your own. Pick a topic you're interested in, do anything you want. Don't do what I told you, go do your own thing. 
And what happens is 90% of the time the kids come back with exactly what we taught them. We give them incredible freedom and all they do is imitate exactly what we gave them. Hopefully now you're starting to see why. In a classroom, the power dynamic is us and them. We're the ones seen with all the power, they're the ones underneath us. So their natural inclination is simply to imitate, to act like us. So this leads to very important questions of how do we shift this dynamic so kids feel as though they're a little more agentic, have a little more power so they don't have to imitate us. They're allowed to have their own goals, pursuits, dreams, and passions. And what kind of tools are we using that almost lead this? Like I always think anytime you give an exemplar essay, like here's the example of a good essay, doesn't matter how many times you tell them, do not write this essay, this is just an example, I want you to take the ideas and go do your own. Most of them will just come back and do that. So how often are we just giving them tools which is forcing that dynamic and leading them to simply imitate, to say, well, if that's what the teacher likes and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So how are we playing with this power dynamic with our students? But more importantly, and this is kind of my second idea, is how do we decrease power dynamics? Safety becomes everything. People start to change power dynamics when they feel safe, when they feel comfortable, when they feel relaxed, when they feel heard around other people. So one of our key things with students then has to be, how do we get them to feel safe and relaxed around us? And research on this kind of boils down to three things. The students have to feel like they have a voice, they have to feel like they have a say, and they have to feel like they have an impact. So a voice, they have to feel like when they speak, they're heard. A say, they have to feel like they have agency, choices in the things they do. And an impact, when they come up with an idea, that idea has to change the dynamics of the world around them. Once kids feel like they're ticking those three boxes, that's when the power dynamic starts to shift, they start to feel safe, and that's when we can really let them loose. That's when we'll see more goal-oriented behavior from them and less imitative, other-directed behavior from them. So thank you guys so much for watching. This was another great one. I hope you all learned a lot. Again, if you like what you heard, if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe below, that'll make sure more people can hear this as well. I hope you're all well, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks, guys.